Good day, guys. Welcome again to I'm a Data. Focus on leadership and inner development. Hey, man, you know, happy to be here. Always trying to, you know, change the narrative, you know, look at some new approaches and topics for this, for this show and be able to connect with other people on a high level. You know, you know, you want to be honest and truthful with certain things in this life and you know, not take away the framework of being, you know what I'm saying, authentic, you know what I'm saying, in your approaches. You know, and today, you know, I like to invite some guests and you know, if they want to come in, I'm going to send out my link to different people. We'll put it on my platform actually so we can see i'll put it on the facebook platform anybody could chime in we could have a conversation about this topic i think that is important you know that we network and and that we you know keep ourselves locked in to what this topic is actually about and this topic right here is talking about what is the truth right and there is no right or wrong when you're looking at this society and you're looking at all the different truths out here so i actually put this link on facebook and linkedin if anybody want to chime in and have a conversation so with that you know i like people to tune in subscribe support my channel. You know, it definitely takes a lot to do a podcast, to engage, to upload content. You know, every day when people <laughs> reach out to me, they want to be a marketing manager or advertising manager to help me build. But you know, everything costs money, time, energy, and so forth. And a lot of times we need think that we have more time than what we actually have. And it's not always true. So I just want to get into this topic, what is a truth, right? And the reason why I chose this topic because I see so many different divisions in the world. We have a division from politics, from, from religions, from what social issues are essential, what social issues are not. Um, and how do we actually find our own individual truth throughout all these different concepts of realities, you know what I'm saying? All these different structures that's actually out there, you know, religions and cultures and value systems, and belief systems, you know, people saying, you know, you shouldn't work at a job, you should be an entrepreneur, you shouldn't be an entrepreneur, you should work at a job. You know, it's all these different elements, right? Um, some people say that you know, we're we're spiritual beings. Some people say that we're not spiritual beings. And how how do you, in the midst of all these different, what I would say, spectrums? Because I don't want to put any negative time, concepts on this. All these different spectrums that's out there. How do we define what is the truth for our own personal lives? Right, because you may be able to get into groups right you may be able to meet people you know at your jobs or career paths or you know you may be a worshiper of certain things you may have certain belief systems value systems and a lot of times if people do not fall in sync with your belief system value systems then maybe you may think of them as an untruth you may think oh they don't know the truth you know they they're, they're still searching for the truth and ironically the person that you're saying this about is actually saying the same thing about you, right? There is no clear definitive when we actually looking at who we are as opposed to what we want to become in the world and actually how we actually define. We may see ourselves as a certain way or in a certain way and other people will see us in a, in a different way, right? In a whole different light, right? You may think that you're helping someone and they may think that you're hindering them. They may think that you're trying to undermine them they may think that you're trying to exert your superiority above them but according to your own individual truth you know you're just a helpmate right you're just a person that has a spiritual awareness or you're kind of like a spiritual god for other people 
but how many people actually may see you in the same light that you may see yourself. This is when our truth actually starts getting a little, um, what I would say, watered down, right? When you start involving yourself in certain realities that you never involved yourself in before, will your concept of truth change? Will there be a different way for you to look at your life as opposed to how you used to look at your life in the past? Right? You may work on a project and you may think that you're trying to change the world with this project and actually the same project changes you. How many lives have we changed into in let's say the last 10 to 15 years? How many different identities have we created for ourselves in the last 10 to 15 years? How many of us have elevated? How many of us have decreased? How many of us believe that we are not at our highest potential? How many of us believe that we have actually superseded our potential and that we can actually do more of great things in our lives? Right? These are all individual as well as collective truths. So the individual truth is actually you. It's actually regardless of what it is that you may go through in this life, that you stay focused on you, right? That you find moral systems, value systems, belief systems, that you're goal oriented, that you know, you, you know, you like this career as opposed to that career, right? In regards to what happens in the world, some way, somehow, you stay grounded according to your truth. Right? This is this is the individual, right? But now let's look at the collective. The collective is actually looking into a space where you're basically dissolved into a space. It's like if I go and work at a job, nine times out of 10, whatever concepts or ideas or belief systems that I may have on a personal, individual level, right, will get submerged into the nonprofit, will get it submerged into the culture of the business, right? Um, if I have certain belief systems and I go and lock myself to a certain denomination, right, who I was before I came in here will actually be altered. Why? Because there are many books that's actually going to be developed, right? And those books are actually going to alter my perception. They're going to shift my reality in one way or another, right? I'm reading a book right now called Barlett's familiar black quotations, and I hope you can see this, right? Let me see. For some reason, my green screen is acting funny today, but if you can see this book, I'm trying to see. Hold on, okay. I guess the best way I can see it. I'll show it to you. Barlett's familiar black quotations. I'm actually reading this book. This book is super thick, but I'm reading this book. And let's say if I go into this book, anyway, I'm not, I ain't even map it out. Everything is from the hip. And let's say I just go to one of these chapters and I go to page 204 of this book and it's called Everest Robbins. If I should take a notion to jump into the ocean, think nothing, just nobody's business if I do, right? So if I should take a notion to jump into the ocean, it's nobody's business if I do. Now, look at this concept where he said, you know, if I jump into the ocean, who business is it, right? But is it true that it's no one's business that the person was to jump into the ocean because they say, oh, this is my own personal life? It's not true. According to society, right, we are against the concept of basically people basically taking their own lives, right? We have different response systems that's out there, police systems, we have ambulance services that are actually there to ensure that people will get past a particular circumstance in their life where they can make mistakes and be able to grow and to be able to develop. So a person may say, the things that I do in this society is nobody's business, but it's not true. We have laws that allow people to come into your business. We have governmental laws. We have statutes and commandments. We have constitutions that's in the world that actually begs to differ according to this concept. But let's look at it another way. Let's look at it. Let's see if I'm going to pop up and I'm going to just grab something else that's inside this book, right? And see what that would say, right? And let's see if this concept is actually true. This is page 502, and it's actually called Gwen I Feel. 
Every time a young black girl shyly approaches me for an autograph or writes a call or stops me on the street to ask how she can become a journalist, I feel an enormous responsibility. It's more than simply being a role model. I know I have to be a voice for them as well. So this is a concept where individuals says, according to their truth, that if somebody was approaching about the path that they're on, right? They take a personal responsibility, right? To assist this person, to actually create a higher awareness of being a journalist, because this is their passion. This is what they stand on. But does everybody, everyone believes that truth? Does everyone believe that if they're in a profession, if somebody comes to them and asks them a question, that is their responsibility to actually give out information to increase the awareness of that occupation? It's not true. It's not true. If you may reach out to some people and they might, you know, you have to pay me for this service. You have to pay me for this insight, right? But you got some people that be like, you know, it's free because other people mentor me. Other people help me grow and land. So I'm going to help other people grow. But it's not a universal concept, right? It just shows that according to truth, truth actually resides within the person, right? And that truth in turn, it seeps onto the world. It may dominate the world. It may cultivate the world, right? It may do things with the world and makes it like, you know, bewildered behind that truth and say, wow, that person actually did that. I don't believe they actually did that. And it shows that a lot of times our truths are actually subjective. You know what I'm saying? They are not objective approaches. We may think that because we know something or because we believe something or because we grew up in a certain way that that truth is a universal truth and that everybody everybody will believe this truth or we will actually be able to explain it to the whole world. But if you do that, if you constantly, and this is a great point, if you constantly steps outside of yourself to prove to the world that you exist, do you exist? Think about it. If it is your duty, it is your responsibility to make sure that everyone in the world knows who you are do you know who you are is is it important that everyone knows that you you have this type of religion that everybody knows you have this political belief that everybody sees um that you have money or that you have great um bc skills or you have great taste right is it that important for people to know is is your truth basically basically sound according to other people is it becoming to other people that you have you have to be known as this in order for you to be able to live and to know your truth that if i go and i speak to you at the bus stop and we start speaking about religion is it imperative that you tell me what your denomination is that you do you have to tell me what your denomination is even though there, there are countless denominations out there i might not even be speaking about a denomination i might be speaking in general but is it essential that i know exactly who you are what you are and what you stand for like do i have to know this thing Right? Is it is it essential that I need to know that you drive this certain type of car? Right? And is it important that I have to know that you're married, that you have children, right? That you drink this water as opposed to that water, that you're a vegan or that you're a meat eater? Like, is that really important for me to know or for a stranger to know that you don't know to know what your truth is? And if you constantly put your truth out there without meditating on your truth, without, without cultivating your truth within yourself, without living out the practice of your truth, even when others are not in the room according to your truth, is it actually your truth? Do I have to wait until I get into a group in order to go on video to speak about things that's important to me? Would that, would that make life basically grandiose for me that I will actually go and put myself out there on the front street. 
uh, truths, you know, a lot of times, like I said, they are subjective, but they also, in that objective standpoint, because those of us that seek levels of improvement for our truths, right, in a way, kind of diminishes what this truth actually is. Are we able to see the truth of us and live with that truth if no one else was in the room to actually witness that truth with us, to live that truth out with us? Do we want accolades because we believe that the earth is round according to it being flat? Do we have to have accolades because we achieved this accomplishment or achieved that accomplishment? Do I have to be in certain rooms and certain spaces to know what I know and to be who I need to be? Or am I just subjective according to what the world actually sees me as being and what the world wants me to be, right? How do I live out a concept in a world that is not my truth, right? Where we say, you know, I was born alone. You no, know, this is my life. I can do whatever I want to do with this life. But is it true? Do you really, a lot of times, believe that this world is just totally belongs to you, that this is your life within itself? When you go out to achieve a goal, do you compare yourself to others? Before you make a step in your life, do you have to go and ask people for approval? Like, you know, do you think this is a good concept for a book? Do you believe I will be a great motivational speaker? You know, do you, do you think I'm smart enough to get this type of job or for me to go to college? Do we, do we need to approve of other people before we start living out our truths? Or are we able to just move according to our truths? What is the truth? And why, and why is this truth important, right, to, to know from other people? Why do other people need to know exactly who we are and what we are? Why, why, is this, why is this extremely important? Right, this link right here is to come right into the show. If you want to come in and have this conversation with me, I will be more than welcome. I had a guest, but they canceled the last minute. So, you know, I'm willing to take any guests right now, you know, just to have this conversation because, you know, I'm an interactive person. That's, that's one of my truths. Right? I love to interact with people. I love to express myself in certain ways. Right? And I believe that through connections, we are able also to find a connection of who we are. You know, it's that, that epiphany. Right. How do you have an epiphany? Right. What steps do you take to, for epiphany? Do you go jogging? Do you go ride your bike? Do you meditate? Do you work out? You know, do you talk to others? You know, do you share who you are with others? Do you put yourself on a table, you know, like a platter so everybody can eat? Right. What do you do to stay grounded in your truth? And to find your truth, if you were to ever lose your truth, you was ever to lose your way, right? You know, a lot of times people say, you know, you can't fall, you can't, you can't go astray from who you are and things of that nature. But according to this 21st century, when I walk down the blocks of Brooklyn, when I go into the train stations, I see people laying on the sidewalk. I see people laying in the train station, in the train. Right. And I'm pretty sure before the people got to that level that they had a sound truth, too, that they believe that they can do this. They can do that. It could have just been a loss of a job. It could have been a loss of a relationship. Right. Um, it could have been a loss of all the economics. I actually shattered their truth and threw them in the sea like they meant nothing anymore. And when you look into the world. You see that there's a manifestation that's out there that's waiting, you know what I'm saying, for us to get to that higher plateau, to get to a higher level of understanding. But at what cost? You know, what, what is it that we will have to sacrifice? What is it that we will have to put on a back burner? What do we have to stop pursuing to actually get into the core of who we are, right? We are an evaluation 
of the world. The world will write books about us and put erupt statues, you know, and give us accolades or talk about us on podcasts and songs and things of that nature. Once we actually reveal ourselves on a certain truth, right? Once we actually come outside of the realm of normalcy, then all of a sudden we increase in the world. But to be a normal person, like an unsung hero, right? You can save a thousand people, but no one knows because it wasn't such and such that saved these people. And no one knows this person that saved these people, right? So now it's like your existence becomes insignificant. Wow, check that out. If nobody knows your truth and nobody's able to take your truth and put your truth on a plateau to create it in a statue like Buddha and things of that nature, right? Are you a truth in life? Do you really exist? Are, are, are you essential? Is, is this really just a mirage, like you're just having like a daydream that you're actually here in real time, in real purpose? So if I got to pinch myself, I'm going to go, ouch, right? And this goes to show one fundamental factor. The truth of you is the truth of you. It doesn't matter who believes in your truth, who sees your truth, who doesn't see your truth, and they were to write books about you or rub statues or give you accolades or pat you on the back or tell you how magnificent that you may be, right? These things really, at the end of the day, really don't matter. What matters is that you have to be able to put yourself under the microscope, like, really put yourself literally under a microscope and analyze yourself. Take a deep breath. And then lock yourself in according to your truth, right? And know that your truth belongs to you, right? Know that, know that, you know, nobody's able to take it, to alter it, to even have, you know, an awareness of it. If you do not share these certain things, if you do not go around boasting and bragging, if you're not egotistical about who you are and what you are and what you have become, no one, most people will never even know that you even exist. If I didn't go sometimes even do these podcasts, people would not be in my inbox asking me about this, asking me about that, or question this thing or you know cursing me out over here or things of that nature right these things i would not be exposed to because i didn't come out and step into my truth my truth is i'm a motivational speaker one of my truths you know i like to interact with other people i put myself in very peculiar situations to advocate and fight for the laws of other people these are some of my truths this is why i actually created um the data right as a truth right but if I didn't do this, who would know about Nathaniel Evans? Who? Yeah, my friends, my family, my immediate circle. They would say, we know him. We know, we, we grew up with him. You know, we used to play in the sandbox together, right? But do they really know my truth? They may know me. I may have conversations with them. We played in the sandbox, you know. You know, we used to sleep together in the bunk beds when we was young and things of that nature. But do they actually know my truth how many people know you for who you're supposed to be like how many people are actually that you can actually say without a shadow of a doubt that knows exactly who you are and know exactly what your truth is who can stand up for you and say without a shadow of a doubt i know that person's spirit i know what that person is capable of doing i know what that person won't do will do and I'll tell you this, man, it could be a thousand years from now and that person would still be the same person. Would we be able to actually make that assessment for other men and for other women that's, that's in our lives? Do we know our coworkers? Do we know our boss, right? Do we know um, what's going to happen in the future? Do we know what's going to happen in the past? Right? Do we know what's going to happen in, let's say, 10 minutes? Besides me sitting on this podcast, do you know what I want to say in the next 10 minutes? You probably don't. 
we're living in a life where we're so encumbered upon certain realities. We're so locked in according to enormities in a world, as I would say all the time, that was created before I came here, right? We fall, we fall into cultures, into belief systems, into moralistic views, right? We call ourselves liberals and conservatives, Republicans, Democrats, right? And all these different terminologies. And a lot of these terminologies actually exist before we was even alive, before we even open our eyes. These things is already here. So now if we jump into these things, you know, into this boiling pot with everybody else, and even though we may exert ourselves, even though we may be recognized for being this or that person, is that actually our truth? Would that truth survive for 10,000 years if we were to live consciously for 10,000 years? Would that truth that we have today would it continue to exist? Would it continue to assess us, to increase us, to validate us, to hold us accountable, right? Would it show us that we are a solid entity, that there is no fluctuation in who we are, and that we're just this robotic system, right, that never alters to the right or to the left. Would your belief systems, would your truths right here, right now, survive within you for 10,000 years if you was alive? And maybe say, oh, that's far-fetched. Okay. Well, some people believe that we never die, right? Some people believe that we are spiritual entities having a physical experience. Some people believe that when we transition from here, we're going to transition to a greater place, right? We're going to be connected to a higher being that created us. And this higher being is actually going to endure us with gifts and rich foods and drinks and things of that nature. And is it true? It's someone's truth out there. Somebody right now can say, I agree with Nathaniel. I believe that we'll never die. And if that's the case, then that means that you will be alive 10,000 years from now, right? If the truth that you have right now, would it be your truth in that time period? Would you be able to say without a shadow of a doubt that who you are today will not change in 2024, 2025, 2026, and thereafter, right? We have wars that's actually taking place all over the world, some micro, some macro. Right, some of these wars shaped us individually, but some of these wars are actually shaping us and will continue to shape us on a collective level. So, you may say that you know, I'm a humble, peaceful person until somebody makes a comment. Right, I was reading an article the other day, uh, a young man was in LIU college, he had a prominent position. The young man said something about the Israel Gaza war, I don't know what side he was on. But he has said something derogatory about the war in our fight. But was he saying his truth? Did he actually believe that what he was saying was the truth? And did he actually believe before he stated that other people was actually going to agree with the truth that he actually put out there? He may have thought that this was the case, but it turned out that this was not the case. That other people that heard him speak this truth, which was his truth, were offended by what he said. They were so offended that his statement went all the way to upper faculty. And as a result, he got let go from his prominent position. But that, you know, but but this was his truth though. No, no one could in the world would say that this was not his truth. And I want to read another passage from my book that I have picked out today, which is William Grant Still. Okay. I don't think that it's good for the world of music to have everything out of the same mold. God didn't place only roses on earth or only lilies or only violets. He put flowers of many sorts and many colors here. The beauty of each enhancing that of the other. How about that? Check that out. 
right? So you'll say, you know, roses are the best. And then somebody else says, lilies are the best. And the other person says, violets are the best. And then someone says, no, there are other flowers out there that are great in all those flowers put together, right? This, these are the individual sound truths, right? That they have tapped into, right? And they can't be dissuaded to say, no, you were incorrect. There's another reality, another concept that you have missed. There's another flower out there that you have not taken note to. And as a result, you know, you did a disservice. How about this other passage right here? This is another one. Um, Lucille, Lucille Bogan. I got a sweet black angel. I like the way he spread his wings. This is a quote, right? Just like that, there's nothing else, right? And this was a profound quote. And that person, Tom, and that person, period. But this quote has actually reached up into the 21st century. And what do they mean? I got a sweet black angel. I like the way he spread his wings. Are they talking about a black man, right? You know, are they talking about a real black angel, right? We don't know, right, what this concept may be to everybody because everyone is different, right? Everyone views life and sees life in a different way. Right, and not everyone is going to look at this passage and say, "Wow, you know, this is a sweet black angel." Is it talking about a man? Yes, because it said his wings at the at the end of it, right? So it's a male entity, right? That they're talking about. But who would say that a black person is a sweet black angel, right? Who would say that a black person is valued? On, on that type of light right there, on that type of level, right? We're looking in the world, we have different optical lenses, right, that we're seeing the world from. And a lot of times these optical lenses are subjective to the individual, right? This is William Herbert Browser that made this quote right here. This quote was done in 1897, through 1987. The last one was for Lucille Bogan was 1897 through 1948. That's how long these people survived. So in 1897, from 1987, William Herbert Browser said this quote right here, walk and never get tired, fly and never falter. I'm gonna move on up a little higher, move on up a little higher. Surely God is able. Hey, look at that, look at that, right? So this is a belief, this is the truth that regardless of what happens, I'm gonna keep moving forward, right? I'm gonna keep striving for greatness and keep striving for greatness and keep striving for greatness. And surely the most I is able to help me on this journey, right? This is a space where I'm like, okay, even if I'm not strong enough within my own will, right? There's an entity that's out there that is strong enough, wise enough, and maybe even accountable to assist me on this journey, to assist me on this path, right? I'm learning as I go, when you're looking at different leaderships and you're looking at different concepts, and I'm learning that, you know, I'm, I'm alive in 20, 2021, but there were other people that were alive in different eras, right? And it's not, and it's not just me, right? Some of these truths that other men and women have actually put out there, right? I wasn't here for those things, right? Ethel Waters, right? She was born in 1896 into 1977. And I was five years old, basically four or five years old when she passed away, right? And she says this, only those who are being burned know what fire is like. His eyes is on a spiral, 1951, right? Check that out. I'm gonna actually put that one in the comments because it really is something totally different, right? So it says, this is at the waters, right? At the waters, right? 
was born in night this concept came out in 1951 right and it says only those only those that that are burned by fire let me show you know no what fire is like right this is that the exact quote i didn't change anything right right so let me let me hide it let me let me edit this all right so i kind of like well you get it. only those that are burned by fire know what fire is like right so i'm this is space here what i'm trying to type but it shows this was a concept in 1951 by at the waters that actually talks about being burned by fire right and how many people can say without a shadow of a doubt that they know what it feels like to be burned by fire if they've never been burned by fire right this is a truth right here some people may say no but i i can i can somehow experience i can imagine right what it will feel like to be burned by fire but if you never truly was actually burned by fire would you actually know what fire looks like would you notice i don't think so this is the truth within itself this is not a truth that you know someone is speculating it's not opinionated right it's something that is a value system that someone is able to determine and maybe they got burned by fire and they may try to explain certain things to you but they cannot right as we journey through this life we go through different challenges and different truths that a lot of times Others will not understand what those truths are. We can go all out our way to get them to understand what these truths are, right? And they will never know it. How about this one? This is Queen Mother Adley Moore, 1898 to 1997. It's past due. United States will never be able to pay us all they owe us. They don't have the money but they owe it right so right so this is this is a truth right that, that was in this time with this woman right and this is all in 1898 that this concept was actually vibrating in the world right but then you have people would say that well the united states don't owe nobody anything right there is no such thing as operation you know people went through what they went through we don't owe nobody nothing and then you say other people say well you know that's subjective because they they help other people who actually went through similarities that other nations went through. So why is one race of people more important than another race of people? And now we get into a whole mirage, right? Of right and wrongs. Who's right? Who's wrong? Who's telling the truth? Who's telling a lie, right? And now it's just merry-go-round, constantly, constantly, constantly fighting to get your position constantly trying to say that i'm value i have purpose i have meaning and you know i'm you know waiting for someone to acknowledge that i have value i have purpose i have meaning you know people look at you strange as you move into your life and people will try to challenge you and say that you're not what you say you are and and things of that nature and it's like okay so if i'm not who i say i am when does my truth have value and who who am i going to tell my truth to that's going to believe it without a shadow of a doubt who's going to respect me and honor me in the land according to my truth if their truth is not involved in my truth how many people are able to actually say you know what i respect that person's truth i'm going to respect that person for that person's truth and i'm going to allow that person to continue and to walk in their truth 
and not infringe upon that person's truth or try to alter them, right? I was reading a book called Celestial Prophecies, and Celestial Prophecies was actually talking about energy sources. And it was actually saying that we give off different radiance of energy. It may be yellow, it may be red, it may be blue, right? It may be purple. But it was saying that when he studied relationships, the author of this book, he said when he studied relationships, he realized something in the relationships that when people go into relationships, they try to dominate the energy of the other person. So you might have met them and you had a green aura when you met that person, which may be, say, resemble being vibrant, right? But you may have uh, a, uh, basically a blue aura that actually may symbol being at peace, right? One of y'all within a relationship is going to come in a relationship and try to alter the aura of the other person according to your truth. If you believe in a certain denomination, and I had no denomination when I met you, I would just say, you know, I'm just a spiritual person, but you was locked into a certain denomination. But you like me, you know, you like my hair, you like my smile, you know, you like the clothes that I wear, right? Would you come into the relationship and try to dominate my truth? Will you try to alter my truth according to your liking? Will you try to tell me that who I am is not who I am, but there's a better version of who I am and that you know the better version of me because you met the better version of me 50 years you know, in the future and now you're coming back to tell me who that other version of me is and what I actually can become in true potential and true form. You actually a time traveler, right? So now you're able to dictate to me, right, what my truth is and what is the sounding vessels of my truth, right? Where where have I gone wrong in life? Where have I gone right? You agree that I should have dated this person, but I didn't. I shouldn't date that person, even though I didn't know you when I met these people, right? How did you have friends like that? When I never met none of your friends, but you meet my friends and you can judge my friends, but I never met none of your friends, right? And you're able to actually move me into an unfamiliar space of me saying I'm an unknowing being according to my truth. And that some way, somehow, I was waiting for you to define me. That's what happened. I was living this whole life without you. And as soon as I met you, Right, I'm waiting for you to define me. I'm waiting for you to tell me exactly who I am, what I am, and what I can become. That seems a lot. That seems that seems like a lot of pressure, right, on me as a person to actually fall into some type of cycle of this nation, of this notion, right? Why do I want to fall into a cycle of this notion if I meet? listening to the fact that you know who I am when me myself I'm still striving to know who I am and to actually still get to fundamental aspects about me and let's say you know you experience a dramatic loss you may have had a great identity with a partner a life partner and a life partner is no longer here has your true change from the time a life partner was here to the time a life partner transition has it changed? You may have a child, and I watched another day when a person lost their child, you know, most half a bit, you know, that person lost their child, blessing to the child, and a person that experienced that loss, that they, their truths of who they were have changed because they lost that child, bro. When that child was alive, they might have been a more vibrant person, you know? They might change forever. They might be a better person for the rest of their life or, or, they, or, they, or they might or they might heal they might go through therapy they might you know go through meditation they might give their life to the most high right they may heal from from the reality of this loss but who can say that this person won't change who can say that this person truth will not be altered from night to day from all to water because of such of a loss no one well, you know, you don't even know if you would change if a loss like that took place in your life. If you were to lose someone or something so dear to you that it was connected to your identity. How many things have we created in this world that's connected to our identity? People, places, and things. 
become our identity. How many times do people, places, and things change in this life? I'm going to read another passage. Like I said, I didn't study any of these things. This is just off the hip. This is Count William James Bosey. This was 1904 to 1984. This person was alive. This was the person's quote. Play like you play. Play like you think. And then you got it if you're going to get it. And whatever you get, that's you. So that's your story. From Good Morning Blues, the autobiography of Count Bosey, 1985. Right? Is this the truth? Play as you play. Play like you think. And then you got it if you're going to get it. And whatever you get, that's you. That's your story. Hey, how about that? How many of us create our own stories in life without the influence of others? How many of us? How many of us is actually responsible for our own story? How many of us know without a shadow of a doubt that we know who we are, we know what we represent in the world, and that we can we'll continue to be this person, to be this vessel, and no matter what happens in the world, we will not be altered. We will not be watered down. We will never go to sleep in a train station. We will never be homeless on the streets, right? We'll always have money to, to, to eat the best food, to drink the best drinks, to always go out and wine and dine ourselves, right? This is, we, the friends that we have now, we know that we're gonna have these friends in our lives for the next 20, 30 to 40 years, right? And that we will never get into an accident or nothing, you know, unconsequential will happen to us because we're always aware, we're always on point, and we got everything figured out. How many of us know this? How many of us are able to make these certain predictions that say that our lives will never change and it will never be altered, right? And that's it. How many of us do that? This is all the big boy, Chuppet, 1905 to 1974. Well, that's all right, mama. That's all right for you. That's all right now, mama. Anyway, do you. Oh, how about that? So you might say, this concept is here, where the person may say, I know what's right for you. And the person would say this to them and say, well, you know, you don't know what's right for me. You know what's right for you. You have to do the things that you have to do for you. I'm not responsible for what you believe that I should do or what you believe that I should be because who I am is who I am and has nothing to do with thee. Right now, I can turn the whole poem around and create a whole different vernacular around the poem because it may resonate or because I've seen this truth many times before where people actually create a reality for your truth that you have not agreed to. You did not walk up to a person and say, you know what, man, I like you. You're beautiful. You know what I mean? Listen, I want you to change who I am in the next five years. This is why I met you. I met you so you could change me in my life because, you know, for some reason, when I look at you, I know what I shall without doubt that you're going to be the person that's going to change me for the better. You're going to be the person that's going to change me for the worse. And I could have not, I could not have changed in my life if I did not meet you. How many of us walk up to a person and this is our introduction. Change me. I'm insignificant. I have no value, right? And it's you that's going to give me purpose for my life. How many of us? How many of us actually does this? When we meet people on the streets, we don't do this. We come to people and we say, "I'm such and such. This is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I believe. You know, this is what I value. These are my moralistic concepts, right? And then you want to be accepted." as the person that you presented yourself to, right? As, you want to be presented as that person. You want to be respected as that person. You want to be adhered to as that person. And at no time in your existence did you go to someone that you met and ask them to change you and that she was going to see a therapist or something like that that's going to help you understand your past and understand how you can actually get past your past, right? But how many people that you have walked up to in your life and say, you know what? 
I feel insignificant. I have no value. I have no purpose. My belief system suck. My value systems are, 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 are through the roof, right? I have no more moral compass. And I'm telling you, when I looked at you, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that you could help me get back on track because you saw my life in the future. You're a time traveler. You went into the future 100 years from now. You saw me there, a different version of me. You came back to tell me the story of how I get my life together because you talked to the other version of me 100 years from now and came back to report this to me. How many people does that? No one. No one walks up to a person and tells the person that I'm insignificant, I have no morals, I have no values, I have no principles, and I need you to change me. No one. But when you get into relationships, when you go into your churches, when you go into your schools, when you go into when you when you go into your the places of employment, right? People are altering you and changing you all the time. Everybody has this quick fix notion about who you are and how you're going to become this person and what you're going to do when you become this person and how they value so much in life because you have become this person. And what happens if you change from that person that they have created you into? Now what is your significance? What is your value system then? Is it, is it meaningless? Did you, did you go back to square one when you walked into them, when you should have said to them, when you first met them, I'm insignificant, please change me until you want me to be, and I will be that person for you? Is that the case? I'm going to read one more thing. I, like I said, this is all from the hip. This is Charles Alston. This is 1907 to 1977. I don't believe there's such a thing as black art. Though there's certainly been a black experience, I've lived it, but it's also an American experience. Hmm. Hmm. How about that truth? How about that truth? We have a lot of concepts like now, black art, cultural arts, right? This person right here in 1907, 1977, whatever that process came out at, right? It came out in 19... 68 december 8th right and he said that i don't believe there's a such thing as black art how many people would actually agree with this as a truth how many people how about this one it just caught my eyes so i have to say it this is francisco papa doc de Valio. this came out in 19 no this came out in march 8th 1963 Haitians have a destiny to suffer whoa is that true is that a true is that a vibrating truth that goes to the whole world that the Haitians have a destiny to suffer is that true how many Haitians that I will go to and say you know what you have a destiny a destiny to suffer how many of them will actually agree with me and how many would like me after I made that statement? How many? Right? I might get cursed. They might chase me down the block. Right? They might look at me in disdain for the, their whole life. Every time they see me, they can't stand me because I just walk to a Haitian and say, you know, you're destined to suffer. Right? But this is the truth that a person was actually put out there that a person that resonated with that person because they may be Haitian, right? And they've been. They done seen a lot of suffering amongst their people. And they say, you know what? Suffering is our birthright. This is what we do. We just, right? Look at it, man. What is the truth? How does the truth change from point A to point B all the way down to Z and then come back again to point A? How many times have we shifted in our dynamics in life? How many times have we been aware and then we went into a space of unawareness and then we came back into a space of awareness? Then we went back into a space of unawareness. How many times have we been married and said we had the perfect relationship and then got a divorce and then went and got married again? Or, you know, we had children and some of our children we like and some of our children that we don't like. But we, well, we do a thought, we always love the child that we have. But then next thing you know, we, oh, oh my God, I don't like that child like that no more. Me, me and that child don't click together. How many people deal with these certain realities and these certain truths? How many people? 
Hype People was a, was well renowned, world renowned dancers, got injured, lost one of their legs, and was no longer able to dance again. Is dancing now their truth? Dancing was their truth before they injured their leg, but is dancing now their truth if they can no longer dance? Do they have to have, be able to dance in order for dance to be their truth? Or can they just imagine being a dancer, even though they're not able to dance anymore, and say, dancing is still my life, dancing is still my truth? Would they be able to do it? One more pass before I go. Will it? Motley. This was 1909, 1965. It came out in 1947. Live fast, die young, and have a good looking corpse. <laughs> Oh my God, check that out. I just read that, right? Live fast, die young, and have a good looking course. This is 1947. So imagine. <laughs> imagine how that corpse looked, his corpse looked in 1947, right? When I first passed away, which is in 1965. I wasn't even born yet, right? How many of us actually want to have a nice looking corpse, right? When you go in, into funeral homes and things of that nature, you know, they make your skin look smooth. They got this nice outfit on, on you and things of that nature. How many of us actually want to live young, live fast, die young, and have a good looking corpse? That's the truth, right? That's the truth right there. It's written in the history books. It's written right here as, as in, in ballets. All the familiar black quotations is right here, written in the book for all the test of time, right? It's in this, it's, it's in this space right here, right? This is where it's at, right? So when we're looking at truth, do truths actually have a universal meaning? Would we always be able to say that we are this truth, right? Arthur Tatum Jr., this was a quote in 1971. There was no such thing as a wrong note. Hey, check that out. There's no such thing as a wrong note, right? This is another concept, another truth that actually is recorded in land to the point that it actually made itself inside this book. But I can actually go into this book, you know, as long as I'm alive, right? And read this quote. And I can also pass this book down to other people in the world, right? And they will also run into this book and run into these truths. And some of these truths will basically resonate with them. Some of these truths will not, right? Some of the truths that's in this book contradict one another. Some of them support the concept of one another, right? This is the same reality that's actually going to take place in our lives. Regardless of what our truths may be, some people will actually disagree with our truths. And some people will support our truths. And some people will be on a fence about our truths. But look at it like this. This is your truth. It doesn't matter how many times you have to change the truth for you to be truthful to you. Don't go in the world and try to mimic other people. Try to mimic the paths, the paths and the concepts and the purposes of other people. Mimic your own. Lock yourself in to your truth because your truth is it, is what matters. It will allow you to get up in the morning, it will allow you to go at peace, go to bed peaceful at night. It will allow you to move throughout the land with unadulterated confidence and awareness because you are your truth whether you want to believe it or not. I'm a data. You know, Nathaniel Evans is telling us, right? You know, this is what I'm speaking about. You know, be your truth. What is the truth? It's you. You're that big A. You're that big A. You know, you're the audacity. You know what I'm saying? You're the authentic person. You're accurate in your life, right? With that, guys, it was great talking to y'all. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and things of that nature. Be there for me, help me grow. And with that, peace. I'm a data with everybody well.
and thanks for tuning in.